Good day, everybody. So we're gonna dial in a batch of drip coffee for a coffee shop. Uh, a lot of these principles do apply to making drip coffee at home, featuring our new Guatemala Quetzal. This one's a great representation of why I like Guatemalan coffees. It's delicious, chocolatey, cherry, sweet, super balanced. One of my favorites. So the first thing in determining how you're gonna brew a batch of drip coffee is deciding what size batch you're actually gonna make. You're gonna start with the pot of coffee that you brew into. Uh, we're gonna actually weigh the amount of water that's in here. You can see it's full all the way to the top. You want coffee in the pot, not air. Air is what causes coffee to go stale and cool off quicker. You're gonna get a large jug and a scale. And so we're gonna just pour this in. Okay, 1,827 grams of water. We're gonna use our calculator. So 16 to one is the ratio. And we're gonna take 1,827 grams and we're gonna divide it by 16, which means we need 114 grams of coffee. Let's get as precise as we can. Something you'll notice on a lot of drip coffee grinders is that they have a legend of grind settings. Um, often that legend is tailored towards or optimized for home drip coffee brewing. Uh, but when you're drip, brewing drip coffee at a, at a cafe or in a commercial setting in a larger batch, you need to actually scale that grind coarseness up to the size of the batch you're using. So if your home drip coffee uh, setting is suggesting that you grind it at number six on this grinder, um, I'm gonna show you the, what happens with the batch of drip coffee when you grind it too fine. It's always best to turn the grinder on first and then throw the coffee in so the burrs are already spinning. Make sure it smells good and it does. So we will take a fresh filter, place that in nice and flat on the bottom. And then I suggest you pre-rinse the filter. Just the bottom is great. Uh, you don't really need to do the sides, otherwise they might fall over. And rinsing this just eliminates some of that papery taste. Then you take your coffee, dump it straight into the center, and then I just give it a little shuffle so that it's all flat. You're trying to make it as easy as possible for the water to flow smooth and even through all of this coffee so that you get the highest extraction yield possible. Lock this into your drip coffee brewer. Get yourself a pot. Make sure that it's rinsed and clean. Do make sure that you're using hot water when you're rinsing. It just helps to not shock the coffee when you're brewing it. And then engage the brew button. With a batch of commercial drip coffee, you're looking at a brew time of roughly five to six minutes. Um, obviously, as you brew smaller and smaller batches, that can scale down. Uh, so you're not gonna need as much brew time for a smaller batch of drip coffee, but a lot of these principles do apply. It's just a matter of scaling up or down. So our batch is just about finished here. Get the last remaining drips. First thing I'm gonna do is actually, I'm gonna pull the bed of brewed coffee out and we're gonna assess it. Uh, this is gonna tell us a lot about uh, our grind coarseness. So as you can see, when you pull the bed of coffee out, it has a pretty uneven surface and a lot of the grinds have sort of moved up the sidewall of the filter. This is actually an indication that the grind is too fine for this batch of coffee uh, because the water is sort of forcing its way through by moving coffee out of its way. Um, and so what you can tell from this is that uh, we're gonna have to make an adjustment using the same amount of water, the same amount of coffee, but a coarser grind setting that's gonna accommodate this batch. But what we wanna test next is actually how the coffee tastes. Always give it a swirl before you serve. And this is batch one. You can see it has a really dark, rich color. Uh, even though it's a, it's a medium roast coffee. And yeah, it's a little bit astringent. Um, it's, it's good, but it is definitely, it could be cleaner, it could be sweeter. It, it could just be more articulate. So I think what we wanna do next is we're gonna change our grind coarseness uh, using the exact same ratio, the same amount of coffee, same amount of water. And we're gonna test the results of that and uh, hopefully get closer to what we're aiming for. We're gonna change the grind coarseness from the home drip coffee setting. And we're gonna adjust it down to something that'd be more appropriate for brewing a larger batch in a commercial set. So from six to eight. And you can see actually visibly, there is a noticeable difference in the grind coarseness. Uh, it's a little bit chunkier compared to the last batch. Not by much, but enough that it's gonna make a big difference in the finished product. Okay, rinsed, hot, and ready to go. Just finishing up right now, we'll let the last of that drip out. So as we see, we have a much flatter bed. Uh, you can see the visible change in the coarseness. You can also see there's much less coffee around the sides. Um, there's less of a dimpled surface, it's more even. Um, and this is gonna yield us a much nicer, cleaner tasting cup of coffee. And this is batch number two.
little bit more of an amber color. I'm pouring it, it definitely does look a little cleaner. And I'm gonna have a sip off of this one. Immediately, sweeter, cleaner, more balanced, not astringent. I can actually pick up taste notes from the bag and this is right out of the pot hot. So as this cools off, it's gonna taste a lot more balanced, um, a lot more obvious. But this shows a trend in the right direction. Um, the next batch we're gonna make, we're gonna go much coarser uh, to show you what happens if you grind far too coarse, um, kind of the opposite of when you grind too fine. Goodbye, sweet coffee. And we're gonna change the grind coarseness from eight where we are now. So we started at six in the first batch. We're gonna to move to grind number eight for the second batch. And then we're gonna finish at grind number 10. Get that uh, very granular kind of like gravel texture, I like to call it. Much coarser. And let's see what uh, this one turns out like. Okay, so you can see as we went coarser, there's even fewer crines that have uh, made their way up the sidewall. It's very flat, um, but this can be a bit deceiving uh, because we know that we went much too coarse for this batch. Uh, and so the final test is gonna be how it actually tastes uh, because as you go coarser, the water is gonna have an even easier time flowing through it. So the bed is obviously gonna look great, but uh, the results of too coarse are gonna show in the, uh, the weakness of the coffee. So you can see a much lighter amber color. You can almost see right through it. Yeah, it's very see-through. Like, you can see the, uh, the light behind it, where some of these other ones, they have enough solids that you can't. So when we taste it, it's very thin. Um, it has flavor, but it's not rich flavor. It's not balanced flavor. And then when we compare it to the middle batch, a ton of flavor, a ton of balance, the like hazelnut, the cherry, that's all very obvious. And then the first batch has cooled off quite a bit, but it's, uh, it's obviously astringent, it's not balanced. It just could be better. And so you can determine through this test what the range of grind coarseness you need for the batch size you're doing is. Obviously, each coffee is gonna be different. Uh, you know, if we were brewing in Ethiopia, it would have a slightly different density. So you might need more like a, a 7.8 grind instead of an eight for a Guatemala. Um, but that just sort of illustrates that there is a idealized range of grind coarseness for the batch size that you're using. And more often than not, the Grind coarseness that's labeled on a grinder is gonna be optimized for home coffee brewing. So you just need to apply the principles and scale it up as you do bigger batches and scale it down as you do smaller batches. That's my drip coffee sermon.